Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Molly number three. <laughs> as far as replacing Molly, Molly number three. Now, I gotta sit there and say, they got the look down pack. Okay, this woman is actually pretty gorgeous. That's the plus. I haven't really seen her acting much. Um, they didn't really give her a lot of lines, so I can't really sit there and tell her ability to act. But they got the look right. The problem is, is that she's still an unlikable cat. I do not understand for the life of me why they chose to sit there and write Molly so unlikable. Okay? Christina walks up to her and she congratulates Molly. And Molly can't even be bothered to sit there and say thank you or I appreciate it. Or any number of things that she could have said to her. And after she leaves, she just stands there and she hugs TJ. And I'm like, why are they doing this to her? Why are they doing this to this character? Why are they ruining this character? And it just makes me think that, you know, to be honest, they could have really picked any Molly besides her. And it really wouldn't have mattered. Because... They're making her unlikable. So, you know, it, it starts with the writing. And if the writing is not good, everything else just kind of falls apart. Now, granted, the last chick was not exactly the best pick for Molly. But even if this one turns out to be good, unless they change the writing on her, it's not really going to matter. Um, Mike and Willow was there for, like, virtually no reason. So, you know, that was that was um, a waste. Sasha did confront um, Sasha confronted Gladys and pretty much got her to admit everything, which was great. You know, if you were if you were waiting for that confrontation between Sasha and, and um, Gladys, it was well worth it. It was actually pretty good. And she does sit there and tell her, because after she missed everything, she's like, you know, listen, I didn't mean for the doctor to sit there and do all this stuff to you. You know, I didn't mean for him to sit there and take it that far. So I was just like, all right, prove it. Turn yourself in and testify against the doctor. If you if you love me like you claim you do, then you'll turn yourself in. I don't really feel like she's going to want to turn herself in. Um, maybe she will. I've heard rumors that she's supposed to sit there and leave the show. So I guess time will sit there and tell on that. So, Trina, Jocelyn, Esme, and Spencer. Now, in the beginning, you know, Trina's been there nervous. She's anxious and stuff like that. And she's like, you know, where is Spencer at? And Spencer's been there packing up for his trap. Esme is like, um, you know, Ace guy, you know, you got chicken pox or whatever, so you know, you can't really go. There's this long scene of Trina being disappointed. And you know, I actually I genuinely did feel bad for her. Um, because I know what it's like to sit there and have plans for somebody and then things just get canceled, right? It sucks. But then towards the end, it turned out it was a false alarm, and they can sit there and wind up going. So, like, it, it, it was one of those things where it's like, was that even really necessary? Or did they just do that just to stretch out the time of, of the clock at this point? Now, in the beginning, I thought Esme had something to do with that. I thought Esme was like, hey, um, you know, she, she did something to mess up their plans or whatever. And I know <laughs> I know some of the screen appearances are gonna be pissed off, but um I just I like I said, I just thought the whole thing was just kinda of weird. One minute they was like, oh you know, he's sick or whatever. He has you know, he has um, you know, chicken box the next minute it's like, nope, he's fine. It was a false alarm. It's just like what was even the point of even putting people through that? It seemed kind of Whatever. Um, Ned performed for anyone that actually cared. In the beginning, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of weird. 
because he kept Snoop Dogg playing like two songs, or he started to play two songs, and then we'll just go to a commercial, and then we'll come back and we're like, uh, okay, I was, I was gonna sit there and give it a chance, and then he just stopped it. And then he actually plays his third song, and I was just like, I started listening to it, I was just like, yeah, this is not working. I was like, no, mm -mm, this isn't working. So I want to fast forward it. But the thing I found really interesting was, uh, how do you sit there and go to any nightclub with an unfinished song and just hope that, well, the lyrics are going to come through me as I'm Smith did performing? <laughs> I've never heard of anyone coming into performance with something that's not even finished. That's like me doing a review and then being like, well, I hope the words just come to me towards the end. Um, good luck. Like, what? <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was pretty stupid. Because I could have swore he said, all right, yeah, I'll come to the club and perform when I'm finished my song. But you weren't finished, so like, what's, what's the point? <laughs> Um, Olivia is still, you know, she, she feels, you know, well, she's getting drawn. She's getting closer to Eddie. And there's one point where she's there talking to Brooklyn, talking about how, you know, she felt like she cheated on her husband. I'm like, what are you? In, in a way, it made sense. In a way, it kind of really didn't. But it just, it just went back to what I originally said. She's going to get close to him. He's going to get back his memories. And she's going to be all in flux like, what do I do? Now, what I didn't understand was... So she was sitting there saying that she hopes that he finishes the song. And by him finishing the song, he's going to somehow get his memories back. What? <laughs> like, what? How is him finishing a song going to somehow get his memories back? I mean, I know this is soap opera logic, but I'm like, oh, that that just that that really doesn't make any sense. It it really doesn't. But you know what? At this point, <clears throat> now I've heard from people saying that Lois is supposed to come back, and Brooklyn was, you know, telling Ned that, you know, oh, I wish my mother was here, and yada 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 yada. Um. You know, she could sit there and see you perform. So maybe she'll come back tomorrow or sometime this week, I, I guess. I don't I don't really know. But I, I've heard she was coming back. Don't quote me on that, because I heard it from somebody else who got the information from sources that I don't know. So I'm not going to claim that she is coming back. And to I actually get something, do I read something myself confirming that? Um, Scotty was there. It didn't really do too much of anything. Chase got um, updated on everything that was going on. Because, you know, there was a couple of times where, you know, Chase walks into the interrogation room. And he's like, he's really just looking at Dante like, so, so did, did you get anything out of him? Like, like did he confess to anything? And he walks and he's like, all right. What, what is going on? Like, when he saw Sam, he was like, all right, I need to sit there and know what the hell is going on. So he gets... He gets updated on everything that's going on, and maybe Scotty at some point will too. I don't know what's going on with the gruff beard look. It's like he's been camping in the woods for like a whole month or something. What what is going on with that? I, I if y'all know some like behind scenes story about that, please let me know because it's just it's just kind of odd. Um. I feel like that's about it. Let me just double check my notes. This episode was okay. It wasn't really super great. It was more of a filler than anything else, which is kind of weird. I mean, yeah, granted, they talked about, you know, they did the whole Sasha storyline, which was, all right, that was cool. But for the most part, it seemed more of a filler than anything else. Like, I didn't really care that much about the Eddie Main storyline um, or anything that was really going on in that club. Oh, yeah, Blaze is there also. Um, I guess, you know, talking it up or whatever with Christina. And you can just tell right off the bat that they're probably going to wind up being in a relationship. Just throwing it out there. 
Just throwing that out there. Yeah, I feel like that's about it. Um, unless you really cared about the Sasha and and um, Gladys stuff, I was say you could probably skip this episode. You just skip this episode. This, this was this was definitely more of a filler than anything else. But like I said, when I first started watching it, and I saw the new Chris, I saw the new model, I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Um. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go. If I miss anything, you know what to do. Come to tonight's live stream, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll sit there and talk about all the shows. Y&R, GH, Days, B&B. &B. Um, and I will see you in the next video.